my patients, you know, they tell me the truth. They don't come to waste their time or my time. They really want answers. You know, um, I believe them when they tell me that they haven't been eating a lot and they're gaining weight or they have this tiny little bit and it translates into a five pound weight gain, which doesn't make any sense based on numbers because we need more answers. And insulin resistance is both easy to diagnose and it's very treatable. And that's really the, the beautiful thing. We can find out it's going on and then come up with a meal plan or a medically based plan to directly treat it. In terms of the testing for it, it's fairly simple. It involves a physical exam, like measuring the waist circumference. What we know is if your waist circumference is more than 35 inches for a woman or more than 40 inches for a man, that's a risk factor for insulin resistance because it's the abdominal distribution of weight. With regards to blood work testing, I look at the lipid or the cholesterol profile, specifically looking for the triglycerides and the, low, uh, and the good cholesterol, which is called the HDL. And very often we'll find that triglycerides will be high and the good cholesterol will be low. That's a significant uh, sign of insulin resistance. We look at the glucose profile to look at the sugar, the chemistry profile. And I check a fasting insulin level because I find that insulin levels rise years before we see the sugar rise because that's the first compensatory step that the body makes. Sugar's not entering the cell normally, so let's make more insulin. And I pick that up very often and say children and adolescents that their insulin levels are higher than normal. I've also found very useful recently checking a three-month blood sugar. A three-month blood sugar, or a hemoglobin A1C, is a test that had classically been used to monitor diabetics in terms of how good is their control. But what I found is quite a few of patients that I've looked at have normal blood sugar levels, but when we look at their three-month blood sugar levels, they're higher. So it's showing that after meals, their sugar levels are staying higher much longer, <coughs> and they're not coming down quite normally afterwards. So what we're seeing is that more sugar is getting stuck to the surface of the red blood cell. So it's a nice marker for insulin resistance that we may have missed previously.